Hello, uh, I'm going to be talking about how to write a research proposal. I'll be using this uh, PowerPoint, which is given on Blackboard. I'll also use uh, this uh, textbook um, that is also on Blackboard, so you can switch between the two as I do. First of all, I'll talk about this. It's the basic layout and outline of a proposal and we are doing a research proposal. That means that our proposal needs to be based on research. Research could be, of course, uh, looking at textbooks, websites, or journals. Research could be interviews, interviewing a credible source. It could also be looking at a survey and looking at data from a survey from your audience. This will give you unique insights Uh, we won't be doing any of the front matter, so you don't have to worry about that. The first part in ours is the executive summary. Then we do the introduction, the current situation, project plan. We aren't doing a qualifications. And then we go on to the benefits only, and then a conclusion. There is no back matter either for us we have references instead. So you've got two examples to look at. First, the, the first example is the example that I wrote. This was based on iPads. That was the topic. Audience is teachers and students. And the driving question was, how can teachers and students effectively use iPads in classes? The other example is from the textbook and it is starts at page 208. You'll see that the, this proposal and my proposal are a little different. This one is not based on research. Remember, you should definitely base yours on research. That's what we're talking about. Research being uh, research in journals, websites, textbooks, surveys, interviews. Most of this is, is very similar. Starts with an introduction, gives background information in the current situation, then uh, goes to the uh, project plan, and finally finishes off with benefits. We have a little, uh, a few other sections to do. Notice this, I want to point this out now, and I will also talk about it later. This is the project plan. The project plan will uh, offer a step-by-step -step guide on how to solve the problem. This is more like, these, these are like instructions. But I wouldn't really use sequential instructions. I would use paragraph instructions just like this. This is one way to write the project plan. In my example, I used another way, just to use words to explain the step-by-step -step instructions. And also within that, I used themes. I used two different themes to separate my ideas. These are two great examples for you to look at and for you to uh, base your writing on. From the textbook, I'm just going to quickly talk about researching first. Of course, we need to do background research. The brainstorm here, okay, uh, it's a good outline. You could, of, of course, ask subject matter experts, teachers, people in the industry. They might have particular insights and um, examples that you could use within your uh, proposal. Uh, of course, your background research, okay. Uh, there's three examples up there. Cause and effects. The proposal looks at the project plan within a particular situation. It also talks about benefits. There are lots of opportunities to talk about causes and effects. You should definitely uh, talk about some of these um, within your project plan and then the effects in your discussion of benefits. So I've already talked about uh, which sections there are. The executive summary is first. This contains the main ideas from each section. If someone wasn't to read the whole proposal, then what would they need to know? We're trying to just do this in one page or less. 
and the skills that you need to do and need to show me are your summarizing skills. You should also be clear, you should have clarity in your ideas. This should definitely be concise. That's important in any writing, but particularly the executive summary. The introduction is next. Of course, you need to explain the current context. This, you shouldn't write as much detail as the current situation here. You need to next explain why the topic is of interest. Why is it in, of interest to the reader and also to the context? You need to introduce the problem. Do this in general terms. You'll talk more about the problem later. Incorporate some general research. You'll see in my example, I incorporated some research in general. Then in other parts, I was more specific and wrote in more detail about this research. The skills you need to show me in the introduction are the ability to highlight. Highlight the topic, uh, the interest. Highlight the problem and also explanations. Uh, in the textbook on page 214, there's a little bit of information here on how to write the introduction. Also on page 214, there's more information on how to write the current situation. I've incorporated these into my notes here, so I will switch back to the PowerPoint. The current situation, you need to describe the context of the problem. Why is a proposal needed? You're persuading someone. Again, this is persuasion. You're persuading someone that there is a problem and they need your solution. So, by explaining uh, how a, why a proposal is needed, you could talk about some shortfalls some disadvantages of the current situation. You could also talk about current causes and effects. What are the disadvantages with this? Or you could um, predict what will happen if the in the future if nothing is done. In the current situation, you could include some research, interviews or surveys as appropriate. And for skills, you'll need to analyze the context. You'll also need to describe it to, uh, within your proposal. The next part I want to look at is the project plan. This uh, textbook is part two. You'll need to download it from the Blackboard webpage. In the project plan, you'll need to describe in detail how you will solve this problem. You'll need to give a step-by-step -step solution. You're almost giving instructions, aren't you? However, as I explained before, looking at the example, there are two ways to give instructions. One you can give instructions through your words. I separated my instructions in themes. I identified two different themes where I would solve the problem and I talked about them. You could also give a step-by-step -step solution in using paragraph instructions. Remember this from our instructions? You'll need to explain how to solve the problem and why you solve it in this way. This is important to give your rationale. You obviously use research interviews and surveys as appropriate and the skills you'll need to show uh, within this project plan, of course instructions, you'll need to explain and also provide a rationale. These are all important within the project plan. The discussion of benefits is next. This part isn't well explained in the book because it covers a lot of things about cost so we won't look at the textbook for this. Uh, the discussion of benefits, uh, you'll need to explain the benefits of the proposal. There's a change and you must persuade the readers and the audience that your change, your solution is better than the current situation. So go on, put your thinking caps on and give more details of why your proposal is the best. You'll need to re use research, interviews and surveys as appropriate. The skills you'll need for this will be to explain, justify and persuade that these benefits are worth the change. The conclusion is last. This is of course a brief summary, just to recap the main ideas. This is your chance to persuade them one last time, so make it your best shot. Uh, 
Of course, the skills needed will be a summary and a persuasion. Well, that's it. Apart from your reference list, that's all you'll need to do to write a research proposal. Just to recap, you'll need your executive summary first, your introduction, the current situation. You'll need a project plan, a discussion of benefits, conclusion, and finally, a small reference list for those uh, text textbooks, websites, journals, or other things you'll need to cite. Good luck, everyone, with your research proposals. I'm looking forward to reading them.